This is Deadpool Negative. I'm back and here with a review of Transformers number one to three. Um, here we go. And I recorded uh, a half hour of video. It's actually the first video I recorded and I trashed it. Just think about issue one because I rambled a little bit too much about my history with the franchise. So I'll just keep it short. All right. First, um, what is Deadpool Negative? He is an old school fan of the series. I watched it when I was a wee lad. You know, I believe I was six or six. I was six in 1980, 1984. I loved it. I loved the toys. I have. I still have some of the toys. I saw the movie. Great first half hour. Kind of iffy remaining 50 minutes, 56 minutes. Um, I read the comics. Uh, that's how I got into comics, because there were Transformers, and I read Transformers comics, and those went to Marvel comics, and eventually went to other comics. And since comics have ruined my life, although it was my life to ruin, um, I can blame it all on Transformers. Um, my history with the comics, basically, I read all the, the, I read the entire Marvel series. I think Bob Bedensky's work was subpar overall. Uh, I thought Simon Furman came in the last two years of the book and made it a phenomenal appointment reading. When they returned with the Dreamwave books, um, they weren't very good. They looked fine. Um, the issue, the comics they had, um, uh, Furman and Wright were pretty damn good. I love The War Within, but that's about it. And then when IDW came along, I thought the initial Furman years were fine. They didn't really move me too much. I thought Paul Mayo Megatron was an interesting deck clear, although that series is, I've read it several times and I find it kind of iffy, and maybe I'll review it for here. And I am the one person on earth who thought the 31 issue Mike Costa run was actually fantastic. Um, and I think even Mr. Costa would disagree with me on that. And I thought the, um, the two series that follow, the four series, excuse me, that followed with John Barber and James Roberts were pretty much phenomenal. And uh, in particular, I actually am one of the few people who like Barber better than Roberts for various reasons. And uh, I thought the, uh, I think the whole shared universe of the J.I. Joe, I just, that didn't work, you know, and uh, I think IDW would agree with me. And then uh, with the final, with the Brian Ruckley run at the end where he relaunched, re rebooted it on Cybertron, I thought was generally good, but also had, a, had some flaws like, I thought the overall story and world building was fantastic. It was very difficult to invest in, in some of the characters because um, it, it was just so much about the overall plot that I couldn't really get into it. I couldn't really feel anything with it. And which takes us to now with uh, when IDW got the uh, G.I. Joe and Transformers licenses taken away from them and they were relaunched with Robert Kirkman's Skybound. And interesting thing, Kirkman is relaunch is launching G.I. Joe and Transformers along with a new series he created himself with uh, his Oblivion song collaborator, Lorenzo Di Felici, called Void Rivals. And it's a classic Kirkman comic in that the lead the female lead is a is a horrible person, yet we're supposed to care about her. Classic Kirkman. Um, no, it's actually an entertaining series, but when I but you know it it's Kirkman. You read enough Kirkman, you know what you're getting. It's, it kind of uh, bothers me that, I mean, I'm sure he's got he's put a deal in place that makes him and his collaborator financially secure, but Hasbro owns Void Rivals, the property, outright. That kind of, you know, it's not, it's, it, but it's, it, it's just funny to see Image Comics be Hasbro's newest publisher. Anyway. So this brings us to issue one. To, to I was like I said, I did it one on the first issue, but I decided to wait a while, you know, before we record it, and just because I was, I was kind of nonplussed by the first issue, but I, I, you know, I wanted to see what more where Johnson was uh, creator Daniel Warren Johnson was going with it. Now Daniel Warren Johnson's an interesting guy. He's he's a, I think he's a phenomenal manga influenced influenced artist. He's written two books I've re rather enjoyed. Ghost Fleet, which is a collaboration with Donny Cates, which I know Donny Cates isn't popular this week, but um, I really liked uh, that sto that comic, and it's well worth reading. And more recently, uh, Do a Powerbomb, which is a luchador story about a guy trying to resurrect his 
which is a story about luchadors trying to resurrect the dead. Kind of. It's it's a very interesting story about what it means to be a parent and also a luchador and also have supernatural means to bring back the dead. Something like that. I, I'm, I'm not describing it well, but it, it's really worth your time if you haven't if you haven't read it yet. And I'm a little surprised, like, um, John's really doing something like this. You know, it's kind of like, you know, say going to, from writing something like it's, it's, it's a sin to um, Doctor Who, funnily enough. But he is an old school van, and this is very much the old school Transformers you want. And by that, I mean um, this first issue in particular, and what was kind of I'm plussed about it, this is a very much is like the ultimate Transformers animated. Uh, like I said, I watched all the anim- I watched every episode of the animated series. Um, a lot of them were bad. Not many were good. Maybe none. I'll have to think about it. Um, but the characters were vivid. Every kid remembers Optimus Prime, and so does Johnson. I'll get that in a minute. But it was also like, so we get to the set, uh, because of the events, the events that happened in Void Rivals, um, Jetfire, remember Jetfire? Wakes up and uh, lands and tracks the Ark to Earth, you know, to where it crashed on Earth. It's very much the familiar setup, like the Ark. We have the Ark. You know, we have the Autobots and Decepticons unconscious in there, although one Decepticon in particular is not there. Megatron has not shown up in the book so far. Um, and Jetfire, who was awakened in Void Rivals, realizes, hey, um, I got to go back, got to go find the Autobots, and he finds the Ark. And just as Spike and the uh, ultimate Spike, Witwicky, and Carly are um, looking, looking, are investigating the um, Ark being being stuck in the mountain, Jetfire's there waking everybody up. And then the big twist happens. And it's not much of a twist because, A, the character was not in the, the promo art, so I could kind of figure out what was going to happen. And, B, I'm going to spoil it because they've already made covers spoiling it. The first guy who wakes up is Starscream, and this version of Jetfire is not aware about the Autobot Decepticon War, so Starscream takes his no takes his blaster and blows Bumblebee's face off. Yep, Bumblebee's dead. And, and you know, and I just like to state for the record, Tim Seeley was killing Bumblebee before it was cool. But he was. He killed Bumblebee before it was cool. Anyway, um, and uh uh, Johnson joked that he doesn't like drawing Bumblebee and Bumblebee staying dead, which is, you know, I had I, I, kind of hard to find a the doesn't like drawing Bumblebee thing a little hard to believe because he's drawing Cliff Jumper. That's not that design's not much different. But OK, you know, and it's like it's like the ultimate series. Like, you know, it was like every the heroes, you, particularly uh, Miller, you know, the heroes, you know, but just a tad meaner, tad leaner, a tad more edge, but not too much edge. This comic is really violent. Um, there's a lot of squishing, a lot of, I mean, but it's not super graphic. I mean, I think, uh, one thing Johnson really liked, there's a scene in the first issue where the very, the end of the first issue, like, um, Starscream essentially pulps some, but pulps a human, but it's done with like sound effects and blood and you don't really see the dead human, the human, you don't actually see the human exploding on panel. I thought that was really effective. Um, but, but, you know, I was kind of just, I was kind of not non plus. I, I didn't like it as much as I liked Ruckley's first issue, which set up an interesting mystery and story on Cybertron. But by the second issue, things started getting more interesting because he really just build up, build up character. He started building, doing character moments. Now, Spike and Carly aren't that interesting. There's also a, this version of Spark Plugs and Alcoholic. There's an implication that they, there's some sort of Witwicky uh, relative that was in the military that died. And that's and that's why Sparkplug is such a heavy drinker. Um, but like we they have a scene where Optimus Prime, you know, wandering through the through the woods, like oh by the way, in the first issue, after Bumblebee gets his face blown off, Optimus Prime wakes up. He's like, what the what in the world? And uh, he he um, you know absconds with Car- Spike and Carly. You know, and uh, there's. There's a bit like, you know, there's a bit where Optimus Prime is walking around. He accidentally steps on a deer and kills it. And he's crestfallen. He says, um, where I am from, everything is metal. The ground doesn't sway when I walk. I don't leave marks for my feet tread. I should have known better. It's a really nice character moment. And they have these, um, you know, uh, just they have scenes where... Uh, 
Starscream and Skywarp are just wrecking shit. And there's Laserbeak and there's a uh, you know Sparkplug's dad's kind of a you know is is apparently ex military himself, and he's kind of a prepper and he kind of he's kind of a gun nut, and that leads to some like obvious like oh yeah but. What st- comes through in the second and third issues is just like the tension, and I think one of the, the my person I think one of the appeals of the Transformers franchise is the way Optimus Prime is the ultimate good guy. He always does. He always stands up for the human. He always stands up for people. You know, he's freedom of the sin- right of all sentient beings. And I think Johnson in the second and third, and then especially the third issue, he really, really gets that. He really understands that whole thing because like Optimus Prime, there is some shit in this third issue that like is crazy manga inspired. Very, there's this, there's a bit that I've only seen Eric Lar- I mean, uh, 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 for an American creator, I've only seen Eric Larson pull off correctly. And yeah, this, this was um, a pretty great, pretty great. I was really ha- I was really overjoyed with how just visceral and there's so much that so much of comics has been stuck with the waiting for the trade mentality that I think like I really appreciate Johnson's making sure everything is um, you you get your money's worth the, the issue. Another thing I think is interesting is like he's portraying a lot of the people in the town. The Transformers are crazy gun nuts, you know, who <coughs> are, aren't listening to Carly saying, no, some of them are nice, but it feels like a fair assessment because they, you know, all these robots coming around, like, who cares if there's one or good or bad? Like, they're tearing up the place. Shoot them all, you know? And um, so I thought that was, I mean, I don't think it's the critique of gun nuttery that I think Johnson believes it is. But, you know, um, there's this, there's a bit where I'm not really sure a pump-action shotgun could actually knock a, knock, um, a Transformer off their, their balance. But, you know, new universe, whatever. It's just like there's just so much love. And, like, it's like when he was drawing it, like, the more he got, drew it, the more he got into it. The more he stood his tables, the more he was like, oh, man, like, this is cool. This is – I mean – uh, there's there's one uh, I've already read one report. I went, when I picked up the story, they said, "Man, this thing's going. This thing's one of our best sellers." And I picked it up at the st- when I when I, I read somewhere that like there's at least uh, one comic store on my Facebook feed said, "Oh, this is now our number one pull from our from our readers." And I'm like, "Yeah, it, I think it kind of kind of blows. You know, in a way, it's not great that like there's not a it's not a creator owned or a superhero comic that's the best selling comic." It's a Transformers comic, even though I love Transformers. They're the reason I got into comics. But the reason Transformers is selling is because it's done with love and joy and excitement, and it wants to entertain you. And I think a lot of comics get stuck on a lot of things these days, and they're hard to read. And I'm not... I don't want to live in... Let's just say I have a lot of I have a lot of reasons not to go to the comic book store these days. But Transformers number th- Transformers by Daniel Warren Johnson by this third issue in particular, this is a reason to go to the comic book store. This will be this is fun. This will I'm not going to say it will make you feel like a kid again, but it'll it'll feel like important. It'll feel like you're, you're you're having a good. It'll feel important's not the word. It make you feel like you're having a good time, you know. And um, I appreciate Mr. Johnson for doing that. And I am not. I do express some concern. I don't know if he's going to be in on the series for long. Um, I hope he's on it for for quite a while. I have no idea either way myself. It would be really nice. Um, I've heard he signed a three-year contract with Skybound. I assume he's not going to draw every issue, but trust me, there are a lot of people who are good at drawing Transformers comics. And uh, I would, uh, speaking of IDW, if they got Andrew Lee Griffith to come along and draw draw some villains, I would not I would not be mad. 
and uh, I if if they and I would hope that eventually we'd be seeing some more. I mean, I'm one of the few people who enjoyed Shattered Glass. You know, I would love to see more of that goofy ass series. You know, it's that's. Um, but I do want to say one more thing about the universe. There is a backup story um, in in this issue. That's like, it's not a backup story. It's a preview of the Cobra Commander series. Now, part of the premise of the Energon universe is the arrival of the Transformers precipitates the arrival of G.I. Joe, and Duke has already made a cameo. And because the idea is, I believe, that Cobra Commander is using the trans the invasion of the Cybertronians to start up Cobra. And we, Josh Williamson, a writer I've not been a huge fan of, and he's never done anything I dislike, but he's never done anything that really knocked me out. He said something very interesting. He said that this was going to be a horror series. And based on the five-page preview of his, what well, he's talking about horror series, excuse me, his Cobra Commander series. Based on the five-page preview, yeah, this looks like a horror series. It looks like very different from what, say, Larry, D Larry Hama and Chuck Dixon have done with the Cobra Commander. But what I think is even crazier that I wonder if Mr. Um, Mr. Williamson is going to bring back Cobra Law. As insane as that sounds, Cobra Law. You have to, I, I really can't, I mean, if he does that, that's, interest, that's interesting. I mean, this, is, this really will be the ultimate animated universe. But, you know, like, I, you know, it's funny. I was like, I was prepared to, like, be more critical of this book. But the more I'm reading it just for this video, I'm just, I just want to, it's just making me happy. You know, like, it's just, it's just fun. And um, I enjoyed it. And uh, if you might, if you want to get a shot, you'll enjoy it, too. Once again, Transformers by Daniel Warren Johnson. You know, you it's it's selling like hotcakes. They're put they're reprinting a lot, a lot of it, so you're gonna enjoy it, um, enjoy it. So, you know, I'm I'm trying to do this these videos because I want to talk positively about stuff. And I gotta tell you, Optimus Prime is back, baby. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit the bell for notifications. Etc. Etc. Uh, thank you and good night.